Okay, it's kind of dark in here, but this is a forward drive shaft. And if you see right here, you got four bolts. Okay, you got to take off to get it off that flange. But if you notice, the U joint goes into this flange. So instead of just the caps bolting into it, you got to hold another flange. So when the dry shaft comes out, you got this dry shaft plus this piece hooked together on the U joint. All right, now this is a Chevy truck, and if you see the difference, the yoke's right here on the rear end. That you take these bolts out. There's two on this side and two on the opposite side. And you got to take all four bolts out. Okay, once you get them out, instead of taking the whole flange, you just take the U joint comes right out of here. So you can either take and tap right here a little bit with a hammer and try to get it if it doesn't come out, or a lot of times I'll put a big pry bar in between the yoke and the dry shaft and you can jerk it like that and a lot of times it'll come out, okay? Sometimes they get stuck in there pretty good, but usually if a pretty good sized pry bar, you can usually get right up in between there and jerk them right out. Okay, now if you got the dry shaft loose in the rear end, right here, this is a slip yoke goes into this transfer case, okay? It's basically the same as an automatic transmission. When you pull this out, the slip yoke, there's gonna be fluid run out of here. And a lot of times you're working on the front of the car and you got the front jacked up, so it's going to make it even worse. So you either want something underneath of here to catch it, okay, and then they also sell a plug that just fits up in when you take this out and that'll stop your fluid from coming out. Hey right, guys, hey, we're going to take this um, U-joint out into this dry shaft. Now, this is part of a CV joint, but I'm just doing this for example. Sometimes there might be another piece on here that has a slip yoke goes into the transmission or whatever. Um, kind of the same thing applies. You just got to do this process twice. Okay. Now first thing we're going to do is we'll find out. This one has a zerk fitting or grease fitting. So I'm going to take this and it's usually either 5 16 or 8 millimeter. We're going to get this on there and we're going to take that off. Now, if you don't have nothing to take that off, you can just take a hammer and chisel and knock it off. You're not saving the U-joint. Okay, now, you're going to run into either an outside clip, like this one has right here, or you'll have a clip that fits right inside here, okay? And it'll just be like a little half seat clip. The other thing you may run into is... On especially some of the GMs, you'll see like a little hole right here with a little plastic um, protruding out of it. And what they do is they got a groove machined inside. When they put the U-joint in, they mold um, plastic in there. So if it's like original GM one or something, um, and it's got the little plastic nub sticks out right here, what we do with these is take a torch and heat these out. And when you heat that up, you'll see a plastic ooze out of that hole. And then once it cools off, you can take the U-joint out like normal. Okay, now this one has these clips here. And you just got to get in there and get these loosened up. Okay, and then they'll come right out. Maybe. Alright, now we're going to do the same thing over here. Alright, there's quite a few different ways you can remove this um, U-joint out of this cross. A lot of people will take a socket, that socket's too big, but they'll take and drive on a socket and drive it through. You know, that will work if you want it to, I guess. The other thing a lot of people will do is they'll open their vise up, and then what they'll do, they'll put a, a big socket over one side so the cap can go up through, and a little one on the other, and they'll do it with a vise and push it through. But here's what I use, okay? This is a ball joint press. And I just use just the regular press itself because it's got a hole in the end and most U-joint caps for most cars will fit right through there. The other thing I see a lot of people doing is whacking these with a hammer a lot. And especially if there's another piece like this, so whack real hard. I don't like hitting them real hard with a hammer because sometimes you will bend these ears and if you get these ears spread out or bent in then your clips to hold your U-joint in doesn't work properly so um, that's something to think about that's why I like this press method now what we will do we'll take a little 
freeze off. It never hurts to do a little penetrating oil. Okay. Now, I'm going to make this easier on me. Usually, this piece right here will thread off of the yoke. But this one's been through the mud so many times, it's so ripped up and all, that don't try this if you want to keep that seal in good shape. But I'm just going to pull it off of there. That way all I got to deal is with this piece and it makes it easier for me to show you. Okay, so what we're going to do here is simple. We're just going to line this right up. So this is going to push on the cap on one side and then um, the hole here will line up with the cap on the other. We'll push it right through. Now when you do this, you got to make sure that you get them lined up fair enough that they will go through. And then I'll just take a ratchet. You could use the air if you wanted to. If you see now, that thing's going right across there. Okay, now. That part fell right out. Now see what happened is this cap got pushed through and that went all the way through. So we can take this cap out. Now some U-joints and yokes you can just simply get them up out like that. All right. Some of the other ones you'll run into gas cover so it's easier on me. Some of them you'll have to line back up, okay? you have to roll this so that your cap can come back out and you just put this on your cross and push it through. Okay, because not this, part of the reason it comes out of here because this is a, the end of a slip yoke, it's not really the same as a dry shaft. A lot of the dry shafts you won't be able to do this. It'll be real close but you won't be able to, okay? So if that's the case, you just want to push it back through. All right, guys, here's one other thing I want to tell you. If you're cranking on this and your U-joint's not moving, okay, this U-joint's already out, it come out pretty well. Don't, don't smack on the tool. What you want to do is you want to get pressure on that, and then you want to smack the yoke or the cast part of the dry shaft. Don't beat it up, but smack it, because the shock here will go through into that cap and if it is going to let it slip that's when it's going to do it so keep in mind if you're having trouble if you got to put a little bit of pressure a lot of times you can just tap this a few times and then this will loosen up because it'll keep jumping as you tap on it okay now another thing clean these all up you might have to take a little sandpaper or something and go in here but now these as you've seen there is no grooves in these caps you have a clip that looks like this okay and what it does it fits up in I hope you can see it fits up in this groove right here okay so what you want to do is you want to make sure you get all the stuff cleaned out of that groove and that'll ensure that your clips go in and seat in there properly and okay I showed you the one clip Okay, it fits in. This is what the other style clip would be. And this is the one, as you can see here, this U-joint cap has the groove right there. So if you need this clip on this U-joint. So it's a multiple fit. Okay, now the next thing I would like to do is I like to hold the two U-joints up together, okay? And I like to make sure the caps are the same. If you can see that the caps are the same size on this side, but now this side are different. Not all U-joints will be that way. Some will be the exact same size, but this one's not. So we know that this is going to go in this way, because these are the two ears we took out. Now, you want to make sure that when you do these, there's needle bearings in here. Okay? And you can kind of see the grease lines here. And you can see where the needles are on there. Now you want to make sure that when you get these on, 
get in the picture. You want to make sure when you put these on that you get all the needles in there. Because just say, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's the needles down in the bottom now. They're down in the bottom. Now if I put this in, what's going to happen is this new joint, see, will actually be, I don't know if you can see, will actually be a little bit longer because them needles are in behind the cap. So if you get one all back together and your clips ain't going in properly, you've probably got something like that happening. Now you can just take, make sure it's a clean screwdriver if it's your new U-joint. You can just take a screwdriver or something and stand them right back up. As long as you don't get no dirt in there, you can stand them right back up and then put your U-joint right back together. So, when we put this back together here, I, this does not have a U-joint, or I mean a grease fitting in it, but it has a boss for one. So we're going to orientate it back like it was. Okay, so now, I'm going to walk you through, and just, this one, you know, I can put it in there and, and get it in one thing, but we're going to act like that doesn't happen. So what I'm going to do is take the two caps off that I want to put installed. Then I'll run this all the way up to where one side's sticking out, okay? And then I'll put a cap on because if I know what it is, if that's sticking out past where the yoke is and I put this cap on, I pretty good shot that I got all the needle bearings in there, okay? Now, here's what I'd like to do. I like to take this and just press this right on in. Now this one is a little looser than I'd like in there. Now if you notice, here's a key thing about putting the U-joint in, I think. Notice I pushed this cap all the way, not all the way through, it's still in the hole, okay? But I two-thirds of the way I pushed this outside cap through. What that does is lets this cross here stick out some. Okay, that way whenever I go to put this on, even if I got to pull this cross a little bit over, I know it won't fall out of these needles back here, and I'll be able to get these right in. And that way I know whenever I do it, I won't be messing up um, the needles and getting them bent over in there or nothing like that, okay? Okay, what's that going to do? That's going to allow me to get my C-clip in that side. All right, now that we got that C-clip in there to hold that cap in, what I can do now is I can get this other cap started. And see, with this sticking out, and I can even pull that just a little bit. Now, you don't want to pull it too far that you lose the needles in this one. But I can pull that out far enough that I know I can get that cap on. All right, now we're just going to put this back in here. And you can do the same method with two sockets on your vise if you want. Like I say, this one's actually not not very tight. It's kind of loose in there, making it a lot easier. Okay, now I go until I get it tight, but I don't want to force it because I only want it to go hit that clip. I don't want it to push that clip out. Now what we're going to do here is put our other clip in. Okay, see how that clip is all kind of spaced out? See how that one's all squished together? 
So that's telling me that that's not all the way in. So what we'll do is take a hammer and screwdriver. Okay, now that we got this in there and it's a little bit snug. All right, and what happens is when you're pressing this together, you're pressing these caps in and it, into this shaft right here is actually pushing on the inside of that wall. So we got to relieve that pressure some. Now if you had a needle in there crossed over, it would be out of the ways and you'd never get the clips in. So seeing how this is an end one, here's what I do. I make sure I try to hold the cap and I just hit it. Okay. And what we're doing hitting it is we're actually driving this cap out a little bit and then we'll flop it over. It's getting looser, okay? So you want to do that a couple times until you get it loose. Okay, after hitting this a couple times, it's a lot looser, okay? One thing to keep in mind too, this is a very cheap U-joint. Some of the difference in U-joints is the needle bearings in here, the cheaper the U-joint, usually the bigger they are, and the less surface area you have touching. The way the cross is made is different. Some are more fragile than others. But that's basically what you're going to want to do to get your U-joint in. Now, you know, if we was going to put it, just say, into this piece, we would, again, just remove our caps, work our U-joint in, put the cap on, push it two-thirds of the way through so this one sticks out, put that cap on and usually with that method you never lose the needle bearing. Let me get these back on before I get dirt in there. And if you do get a needle bearing messed over, even if you got to take them, if you get dirt in there just take them out and wash them and put them back in because you don't want no dirt to start with. But those little needle bearings, if they do fall over you just stand them right back up. Okay, keep in mind now, when you got a two-piece dry shaft like this and you go to put it back together, you got to time it or phase it, okay? And what that's going to say is that you need the uh, U-joints to be in the same plane, all right? You don't want it to be off one way or the other way. You want these crosses to be exactly true to each other. Now, some of these will have a wider spline or whatever, so there's only one way of doing it. So... What I'm going to do here is try to slide this on here. And what I do, I got this laying down here with this flat. And I'm going to try to slide this end on. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. With this end being flat, see how I'm off here? I'm not in the same line, not in the same plane. This should be up here. So, I'm going to take that off. Okay, now we're still not in the same plane, and that's important. We want to be as close to the same plane as we can, so let's turn this completely over 180 and try to put it on. Okay, I'm happy with that. Both of these are in the same plane. If you look down the dry shaft, you can actually see that this cap and this cap is in the same place. They're not twisted one or the other or something like that. That's very important to phase or time these back because if this if this one's like it is here and you have this one off just a tooth or, or even a quarter of the turn, what's going to happen is that's going to, when this dry shaft's on an angle both ends of it is, it's going to not bend correctly because the two planes are opposite so that'll make a big vibration all right so if you ever do this and you get a vibration and you had to take the dry shaft apart always make sure that you have this time back 